Smile like you've got nothing to prove. No matter what you might do, there's always someone out there cooler than you. Hello, listeners, and thanks for tuning in again to Buffalo Lab Radio Free. I'm your host, Eunice Randall. Thank you for your patience while I've been struggling with some technical difficulties lately. I'm trying to get the show back on track, and I really appreciate the support. I'm also going to be starting up another series of actual audio-only radio episodes, so keep an eye out for that. So listeners, let me share a story with you. A couple of weeks ago, I had this offhand idea, and I tweeted about it, and the idea was, why don't they make Boy Scout-style merit badges, but for tech stuff? So like, you learn how to lockpick, you earn a new merit badge. You learn a new programming language, you earn a new merit badge. And the response I got to that was, Eunice, where have you been? They already do make those. And sure enough, Adafruit makes them, and they're totally awesome. So let me introduce to you Tech Scouts. Hacker Scouts is actually already a thing, and I think they use the Adafruit badges too. And while Hacker Scouts is totally awesome, they're like an established organization with like actual guilds and stuff, and I don't really want to infringe on their hierarchy, but in the spirit of DIY, I think anyone should be able to learn stuff and earn badges. So that's why I'm calling my scouts Tech Scouts. So as you can see, I've already earned a couple of badges. This one's my name badge. Um, and this one is for coding in general. And these two are for Ru the Ruby programming language and QR codes, which is actually what I do for my day job. And then this one is for Maker Fair, which was episode one of Radio Free. But there are, there are all sorts of neat badges for like Tesla coils and high altitude weather balloons and stuff. And the coolest thing about them is that they make you want to do cool stuff that you might not have otherwise thought to do so that you can earn the merit badge. So it's like incentive to do neat things. Which is kind of like the whole point of scout badges in the first place. So expect to see me working on some of those projects and bragging about my scout badges on the show in the near future. And if you follow along with my tutorials, then you can earn some of the badges with me. You can call me Scoutmaster Randall. So anyway, let me tell you about some of the cool stuff I've been doing lately. Two weeks ago, I took a trip to Pittsburgh to take in a slice of their tech culture. First, I checked out this place called Contemporary Craft. I literally just stumbled into it off the street because the building it was in looked really cool. But it was like an awesome place with an art gallery and an artisan shop and like a workshop in the basement. It actually reminded me of the foundry a lot. There was a wood shop and a group of ladies having, I think, a sewing meeting, and they have an awesome lineup of workshops like wood and metal working and jewelry making and book binding and lots of cool stuff. I think it's a real testament to Pittsburgh's culture that I was able to wander into a place as cool as this without even meaning to. But the places I did mean to go to didn't disappoint either. I went to Hack Pittsburgh, their local hacker space, and met some of the guys from there. Hey, I'm Chad. I'm Eli. I'm Gino. We're back Pittsburgh. They're really nice. Their space is really nice. They have a mini Maker Faire that I want to go to next year, and they're super involved with Maker Faire Detroit. They're also really big into the Power Racing series, which I saw a little bit of in Maker Faire New York, which is where you take, like, kids' cars and modify them to be battle-ready and add, like, squirt guns and confetti and really cool stuff and then race. And they did a high-altitude weather balloon that made it into the upper atmosphere, which is something I totally want to do, and they gave me a lot of great advice on it. Their space is really cool too. They had like a sewing station and a soldering station and a workshop around the corner and like an old working ATM that somebody donated. Seriously, it's really nice to visit other hacker spaces and see their setups and meet interesting people. I really hope I can keep doing it. <laughs> but the big thing that Pittsburgh has that really makes it a tourist attraction for makers in Buffalo is Tech Shop. Hey, I'm Gad here at Tech Shop Pittsburgh. We're a membership-based workshop where we have uh, laser cutters, machine shop, welding, wood shop, sewing machines, everything you have to build exactly what you want to make. I've been aware of Tech Shop for a while. In fact, I met Mark Hatch, the CEO of Tech Shop at Maker Faire, and I've been wanting to go to one ever since. Pittsburgh is the closest one to Buffalo, so I figured why not check it out. Now let me explain Tech Shop to you. Tech Shop is like a community workshop where you can be a member and use their equipment and attend classes and they give lessons on safety and usage and they certify people with all their equipment. The motto of Tech Shop is, build your dreams here. 
But now let me actually explain Tech Shop to you because it was pretty much way cooler than my wildest dreams. Any kind of equipment that you could possibly want to use, it was there. I kept thinking that we had seen it all and then we'd turn a corner and there'd be a whole nother room of tools and machines. I mean, 3D printers, laser cutters and engravers, wood shop, metal shop, you know, lathes, welding stations the size of a room, they've got all of that. But powder coating station, yup. Injection molding, sure thing. Vacuum forming, they got it. Water jet cutter, they have a water jet cutter. Seriously, I'm dying to get certified on this thing. It can cut through anything, including your fingers and your bones, apparently. No, but seriously, it was amazing. Tech Shop is a total candy store for anyone who's interested in tech and maker culture. I'm so jealous that we don't have one in Buffalo, but you know, Pittsburgh's only a few hours away. There's no reason us Buffalonians can't drive our projects down there on a weekend if we're in need of some of that heavy duty equipment. I know I can't wait to start taking more weekend trips down there to start to get certified on some of that machinery. Oh, and here's an exciting story. The day after I visited, Mark Hatch, again, the CEO of Tech Shop, followed me on Twitter, so maybe he's watching the show right now. Hi. So yeah, this was my first time really checking Pittsburgh out as a city, and it was really great. I expect to be spending a lot more time there soon. It's a good trip for Buffalo makers, I think, since it's not too far and there's a lot of cool resources there. Oh, and also, I earned these merit badges. If anyone thought I was kidding about the Tech Scout thing, please reevaluate that assumption. This one is for visiting Tech Shop, and this one is for visiting Hack Pittsburgh. Their logo's so cool. Well, thanks again for tuning into Radio Free. Have a comment about this week's episode? Thinking about visiting Pittsburgh now that you've heard how cool it is? Know of another city I should consider taking a trip to? Want to tell me how lame my scout sash is? If so, you are super wrong, and you should email me so I can tell you personally how wrong you are. Have an idea of something you'd like to see on the show? Just want to say hi? Email me at eunice at blrf.org. We're a community-based show, and we're always looking for new and different ideas and content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Radio Free Eunice, or on Facebook and Tumblr at Buffalo Lab Radio Free. Keep in mind that our schedule is going to be a little bit off for the next few weeks because I'm taking a trip to New York City, but I'm going to have lots of great content from there. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Stay busy until our next broadcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>